Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of YouTube, I welcome you to the finale to the original Advance Wars. We're gonna start on the final four missions right now, and they're really, really difficult, actually. So, um, you know, this first one might not seem so difficult, but it's, uh, much harder than it looks. So, I might have to split this final part into two separate videos, but we'll see. So anyways, Sonia's here, and uh, she seems to have figured out who's really pulling the strings behind the scenes. She points out that it's impossible for Orange Star to have attacked Green Earth and Yellow Comet, while at the same time being under attack by Blue Moon. Which kind of makes me wonder why nobody thought of that before now, and why we needed to go through all this intelligence gathering when it seems that simple logic would have led us to this conclusion. But, um... For some reason, she concludes that it's a human clone, and she turns out to be right, but... A clone? You didn't go with a simple imposter? Why's it gotta be, like, right down to making a human clone? I don't get it. Like, we've gone full... what's a really well-known video game with a clone in it? I guess we've gone full Metal Gear or something? Oh, I don't know. Anyways, we can finally, uh, select any CO we want once again, so I'm going to pick Max. It's been too long since I've had an easy ride. I've had to go through four really difficult levels as Sammy, so now it's going to be Max all the way, as much as it can be anyways. So Eagle's going to actually join us for this mission. This is the first mission where you have an ally. Like, normally there's only two players in campaign maps, but now this time there's three, and you have an ally. And there's going to be another map like this later on, too. So Eagle's finally seen the light, he's gonna join us here. His units are all AI controlled, which causes actually a, a number of issues. Like, they're not big ones, but since he's AI controlled, it means that he's going to, like, he's going to use all of those dumb tactics, quote-unquote, that the AI uses. So even though he's got five fighters and three bombers, expect them to waste their turns quite often. Right, so the first thing we've got to do is get rid of the two battleships that are sitting right here. It's unfortunate that you can't control Eagle's movements. It would be very helpful if you could. So, our plan is basically to go up the left side. It's tempting to land your forces on the right side, but this causes all of the medium tanks to concentrate there, and I want them where Eagle's bombers can get to them. And speaking of which, on a previous attempt that I failed, um... Because you can't fail this if you get, uh, careless. That is possible. So, a weird thing is that if Orange Star loses, it's not an automatic game over. It's still possible for Eagle to save you if all of his units manage to destroy the remaining enemies. Which is next to impossible, because by that point, he would probably lose all of his bombers, and he can't destroy any ground units with just fighters. But it's still not a game over. It still plays out AI-controlled Eagle versus AI-controlled Andy clone, which is what we're up against right here, as a matter of fact. Which means that if Orange Star loses, they no longer have an HQ to be captured, and Eagle's HQ can't be captured because the enemy has no transport copters. By the way, good move Eagle, getting rid of that cruiser on the first turn. Good idea. And here's the Andy clone in his CO power. He's an exact copy, right down to the Thassir being the same, because they couldn't bother to write a new one. But anyway, since the enemy can't capture Eagle's HQ, and they don't really have any anti-air units besides the fighters, which are probably going to be destroyed by the end of this, uh, it just causes the AI to pass turn over and over again. It'll go Eagle's turn, he does nothing. Andy's turn, he does nothing over and over again, and you actually can't get out of it because you can't access the menu. And, um, so there's just nothing you can do but wait for Eagle's units to run out of fuel because that's the only way they're going to lose at that point. And did I mention that Eagle's units, they actually burn up less fuel day to day than the, uh, other CO's air units normally would? So yeah, that seems like a pretty huge oversight, and I'm surprised it didn't come up in testing. Because you just have to wait for, like, turn 22 if you don't want to bother turning the power off. Or you could just turn the power off, you know, whatever, close your boat. Alright, so I'm hoping that I can get the medium tank up there and clog that choke point before anything crazy happens. I'm just capturing these cities out of... I don't know, wanting to do something until I get up there. 
because it could seem like this map is really boring because you just let Eagle do all of the hard work. And he's gonna he's even getting his CO power this turn. But you still can't get careless because there are three medium tanks and a battleship still remaining. Well, there's not gonna be a battleship for much longer. But now that his defense has been lowered by the lightning strike, he's going to lose a couple more men too. Not before getting rid of the last remaining fighter. Oh, there's two more left. And I don't think that bomber is out of fighter range either. So yeah, you're basically watching the computer play itself at this stage, but uh, if you want a good rank, actually there's another thing you have to be worried about as well, because yeah, you know how the, the scoring works in this game, right? It's units lost, how much time you take, and however many enemies you destroy in one turn. That last one is important, because Eagle's doing all of the destruction in this map, or most of it. If he destroys all of the units before you get your power score secured, then it's going to be impossible to get yourself an S rank, or at least a very high rank. You're going to lose a lot of points because Eagle destroyed all of the units before you did. So you got to watch for that too. I don't know how many enemy units there are in total, I didn't check. But I've destroyed two in one turn so far, and I don't think that's going to be nearly enough. So, moving along, I'm probably going to lose my battleship. I did not see where the sub dived. The fighters are almost gone. There's only that one there left, and Eagle has lost all of his bombers, so it's up to us. And I completely failed to mention at this point that the enemy is a new color entirely. This is the mysterious foe that's been pulling our strings this entire time. I see that the Andy clone has not improved his intelligence much over the originals. <laughs> At any rate... Uh, the, uh, this army that we're up against is called the Black Hole Army, but they don't actually name it that in Advance Wars 1. At least I don't think they do. It's obviously in Advance Wars 2, we know what they're called. In this first game, I, I guess they hadn't named it quite yet. Um, I gotta get out of that sub's range, so I'm gonna head on over to the HQ, try to capture it, maybe. If you've got all of the medium tanks at the bridge like that, then an HQ capture is your best bet for closing down this level. Just gotta be sure to get all of the units destroyed that you need destroyed. I'm not going to attack that infantry. I'm hoping it'll stay there and not go on the mountain. Alright. Eagle's done his job. Now it's up to... Now it's up to Max. Would love to get my CO power soon. Oh, there it is. There it is already, in fact. Now it's time to set up our power turn. Uh, please live at one health. Thank you! That was very kind of you. Now I should be able to get power. Like, S ranks? You know, I've played this... I've played Advance Wars in general so many times that S ranks in Advance Wars 1 are coming pretty easy to me. But this is where I have to put in the actual effort. So let's fire that CO power. It's also not uncommon to win this map by route, uh, especially if you're max. So that's two units, three units. Can we make it four here? Uh, not with these numbers, but I do want this rocket destroyed. Let's see if he goes for the... oh, he could go for the APC first if we stick it right there. Three units is probably enough for at least an A rank. I'm hoping for that much. So, um, anybody want to know, or ask, rather, why they decided to clone Andy of all people? Like, if you want to gaslight everyone in thinking Orange Star has gone off their rocker, then, um, 
you know, you could just copy Max and have an easier time. Probably, like, just conquer everybody that way instead. Copy Max, because you've managed to copy Andy's CO power. And then uh, run out over everybody with Max Force. That seems far more efficient. Alright, the question is now... Um, this medium tank is not where I want it to be. Hopefully it gets away from there. I don't have any way to destroy it. And it's sitting right next to the HQ. Okay, he went back for the lander. The AI is still prioritizing transporters. For some reason. So this shouldn't take that much longer. In fact, it could probably... Oh, it ended right there. Okay. That's good. That was actually very, very lucky. But the battle's not over yet. This was just one out of four final maps. Well, what could happen next? Oh boy, is he a powerful foe. He is certainly very powerful. Yeah, he was so difficult to fight. Eagle was so difficult to fight, wasn't he? So yeah, in A rank, I actually got full power, but that was way too slow, actually. I took my time and got the full power and technique, but lost out on speed. Alright, so that's one down and only three more maps to go, and um, you know, I've managed to keep my A rank streak going. I've gotten A's or better on all maps so far. So next up... What are we up against next? Well, apparently we're taking a very roundabout route. Look at that. We went from that flag at the top of the screen to that flag at the very top of the screen, and now we're going back down? What is that all about? Anyways, Grit and Sonya are here. Looks like Sonya's about to corner the bad guy. She's totally not going to get in trouble over this, and we will definitely not need to rescue the princess. Because she's a princess, I should point out. Daughter of an emperor, I guess that's a princess, kinda. So even Advance Wars isn't safe from the cliché of rescuing the princess. We've had to do that in basically every Nintendo franchise ever. Well, except for Metroid, where we are the princess. Kinda. Samus is cool, okay? Anyways, we're gonna pick Max again. Uh, he's not exactly going to have it easy because we are finally facing off against the big baddie of Advance Wars. That's kind of a leap in logic, but I guess if we beat him, the clone will go away. They don't really confirm what happens to the clone after Advance Wars 1, do they? Weird. Alright, so... I'm going to look at the CO dossier this time. Here he is, Sturm, the final boss. Although he lacks his CO power in this particular map. He'll have it in the next one. Can't wait to see what that does. A riddle within a shadow revealing nothing. So, since the CO dossier says nothing about Sturm, I guess it's up to me. Uh, Sturm... I, actually, there's two versions of Sturm, I should say, in Advance War 1. What we're facing here is Campaign Sturm. He has plus 20 attack power and minus 20 defense power. So his defense will be weaker, which is great for Max because we can just blow him to smithereens with every attack. You do not want to be struck first with Sturm at the ready. And the other version of Sturm is Versus Mode Sturm. This is what gets unlocked. You don't play as uh, Campaign Sturm in multiplayer. You play as Versus Sturm, who has more defense but less attack. Which I, I would actually argue is more difficult to deal with because a brick wall is much harder to smash than a glass wall. <laughs> but, they both have the same CO power, but as you'll see, Versus Sturm's is weakened somewhat. That's how they decide to balance him. But all versions of Sturm have a movement cost of 1 for all units on all terrain, and I would say that makes him pretty broken. No matter how you try to nerf him. Because look at this. 
He's going to move across all of those forests, mountains, and rivers with no restrictions. And these battleships and subs are going to move across the reefs here with no restriction. It's a severe disadvantage. So, we really got to be careful. And I especially do not want that sub to prematurely reveal my sub. So I will put my sub probably here. That's fine. Get the lander out of the way. We don't really want to do any more unit transporting. We want to get to that airport up here. But in order to do that, we have to get rid of the fighters and the bombers. There are a lot of units out there. And especially, especially a lot of enemy air units. If they strike first, that's going to be a huge blow to us. This is not an easy map, even if you're blowing up all of his units in one hit because of his weakened defenses, don't take him lightly. Alright. We're keeping the missile here because if one of the bombers decides to come up towards the units that are capturing, I want to distract him with the, with the APC. Also, breathe in the amazing Sturm theme song. It's almost sad that they uh, killed him off at the end of Advance Wars 2, although I suppose I just spoiled it. Alright, we captured the base and the fort here. Yeah, I actually considered looking up a turn-by-turn -turn strategy because I haven't done this in forever. I, you know, I think I actually, back when I played this for the first time when I was very, very young, I actually used a glitch in the game. There's basically an automatic win glitch that you can take advantage of. And I remember doing that to get through hard mode, because the hard mode was even crazier. Alright, do I blow up the sub or the battleship? Probably the battleship. It goes down in one hit, because it's Max versus Stern. The fighters are down at the bottom of the screen, which is good for me. And I've already managed to destroy one of them. So we're what should we do with that fighter? I'm gonna use the missile to make sure it stays away. Well, it's a max missile, so that's not gonna be worth much. Can't really build any more air units with no um, airport to work with. Right, so I guess we just keep going as we were. It's good to get one battleship out of the way. But I see that the fighter is trying to go for my T-copter. I'm hoping I can land the infantry before it gets there. Uh, it's gonna be just barely out of reach, I think. Yeah. I might lose that transport copter, and I'm not sure I could have done anything about it. Let's uh, get an anti-air here to deal with the bomber. It's probably going to attack something over there again. And I would like to get rid of the other battleship, so I'm going to try and get there before the sub runs out of fuel. Probably should have stopped at the port for more fuel. Meanwhile, the ground forces are going to uh, do things like this. This is a crazy amount of damage. As long as you get the first strike, I think you'll be okay here. And you don't even have to worry about a CO power because they disabled it in this map. They disabled Stern's power, that is. While the ground force continues moving, this APC is not going to distract anything. I'm going to use it to transport. Uh, let's hope the fighter does not do that. Oh, look at this bomber attacking from out of range of my anti-air. And the sub comes to destroy my lander, so I can't transport anything there either. I completely forgot about that. We have our CO power. I should be able to destroy the battleship with a sub. Now we could uh, lure the bomber over here. Yeah, let's try that. 
see if that works. Can you reach? Yeah, you can. So while we're stomping away at these units, I should probably... Let's see here. I think that's all of the bombers dealt with, so maybe we should traverse the rest of the land part of the map. And destroy all of the units on our way that way. Sturm, what are you gonna do? No, we went for the rocket. He was not distracted by the APC. That's weird. I guess he thought the rocket was a more valuable target than the cow. Oh, probably because he could destroy it. Alright, I'm gonna make absolutely certain that I blow up both the battleship and the bomber on this turn. I need the plus one movement from the seal power to do this. And kaboom. 166. Now that's some impressive numbers. I actually wonder what the highest amount of damage you could deal in one attack like that is. Barring certain commanding officers, of course. You know who I'm talking about. Alright, so the ABC is in fact going to be used as a transporter. I think that's all of the air units dealt with, but we'll just have to leave the fighters alone. Maybe if we send out a cruiser, we can deal with them. And, uh, let's build... Let's go for mechs. So this could take a while. Because we have to go the land route, it seems. And that sub's gonna run out of fuel. It has done its duty. But not yet. It's not down quite yet, but it will be very soon. And if we're going to lose it anyways, we may as well use it as seal power fodder. Okay. So this so far hasn't been, like, seriously, seriously difficult, but that's because of the way I was playing it. Time to chase these boys away. Oh, you know, um, let's just use a lander. We will transport over there, but we have to destroy the fighters anyways, because you can't use air units if there's fighters up there. Oh, uh, I forgot about the enemy sub, though. I don't know where it is. Alright. Uh, I'm not gonna attack that anti-air for the time being, it's in range of the artillery. Oh, we should be able to get away from that sub. That'll be easy. Okay, can I one-shot this APC? I certainly can. Oh, boy, there's like... There's like two or three indirects, though. Uh, that's gonna be painful, but I suppose I can handle it. lost so many units that I doubt I'll be getting a good technique score at all. Making me do this the hard way. Actually, we could just take a... Well, we can't take a lander over there. HQ. I need money for a cruiser. At this point, I just have to, you know, get the cruiser. That wasn't a huge amount of damage. Well, we survived it. Almost lost that infantry. This tank is almost out of fuel, though. Unfortunately, it looks like this map is going to take a while, and I will have to do another video with the final two maps, I think. I do apologize for taking forever, but um, Advanced Wars 1 was really difficult back in the day. So I'll just throw everything I got at them. Next turn, we'll have a seal power. 
We've got lots of units running out of fuel. Alright, that's the money for the cruiser I need. Time to build units for technique. And hopefully cut off Stern's supply of money anyways. Haha, <laughs> his uh, submarine ran out of fuel. Oh, what's this fighter doing? Oh, it's trying to get to the APC for fuel. That's interesting. Well, it's gonna run right into my anti-air. Is it trying to block the bridge? Interesting maneuver. Very interesting maneuver. It could have also been running away from the cruiser, too. I guess that's a thing. Right, uh, we can, in fact, get in there. Just a couple steps away from destroying that rocket and moving on to the next part of the map. Now we've got choke points to deal with. Ooh, this is... Well, there's, there's a rocket in the way. But maybe he will shoot at the cruiser if I move it here to block his cruiser. It's not worth it. Like, there's... I don't even know why he built that cruiser. There's no enemy sub. Right, so we can finally build from this base. So let's get a backup medium tank. That was a low amount of damage for a stern unit to deal. Can you make it up there? Yes, you can. And join, and now he's got all this fuel and ammo back. What is that cruiser doing? Now we've got air units. So now we can probably, like, get some bombers and start raining them down on him. I'm just gonna join these. I don't want to wait for the repairs to finish. Get another infantry going. Okay, so now we wait for the bombers to start coming. Oh, one shot. That's weird. I didn't think that would happen. See, now you see why it's such a threat, him being able to move that far like that. The rocket's actually almost out of ammo. I wonder if it will run out by the time. It's only got one shot left, so we could force him to waste it on the cruiser. That blocks his port from being used. And now the big boys start coming out. Right, I think I think we're set at this point, but it sure is taking a while to make this happen. The rocket's out of ammo, so I could just I could just safely ignore it, I think. I'm not going to use that to uh, uh, check the missile. Don't want to walk right into its range. I think I could safely just ignore that rocket. It's not going to do anything now that it's out, out of ammo. further and we're almost there. Kind of a marathon map, wouldn't you say? Up, oh, it's going back for more ammo. Uh, still no CO power yet. I'm gonna use it once the... I'm gonna use it once the rocket is ready for more ammo. Roll that up. This up. That's a lot of damage. I've said that a lot already, but it really is a lot of damage. 
actually makes me a little bit more confident because the final map is going to be crazy. But maybe a little less crazy with Sturm's lowered defenses. Sturm's only got one anti-air. It probably blows up this bomber in one hit. Ah, I thought so. Now it's time for the seal power. This rocket's got its ammo back, so the medium tank is going to take a hit here. Very unfortunate. Oh, I could have probably distracted him with the APC. I keep forgetting that. I've been playing Advanced Wars 2 so much, and Dual Strike actually very recently. I got 297 medals. Isn't that a beauty? 297 medals in Advanced Wars DS. Only like 50 more survival maps to go, and I've got them all. And 100 A ranks as well. Oh, the medium tank's out of range of the rocket. I was mistaken. Alright, block off the first base. What do we do with this? We gotta blow this thing up. My technique score is probably going to look so terrible. I, I'm just willing to bet that much. I will make a beat copter. But there's only like six or so enemy units left. So we're getting to the home stretch here. I know it's been quite a long round. there. This has been quite a long playthrough. I'm really happy that I decided to play this game again. It's just so good. Like, through all of the, through all of the flaws that might have been there, it's still so very good. Like, I'm not even sure Advanced Wars 2 is better than this. And I've even had to rethink my stance on Advanced Wars DS as well. Like, single-player DS isn't really great, but if you play it with other people, like, I've actually been able to play with other people for basically the first time ever. So that's worth a few words someday. Alright, I think we've got this HQ secured at this point. Like, even the four stars from an HQ aren't enough to stop a max bomber. Like, we've almost got the enemy routed, practically. So I'd better spam units for technique. It's been a while since I've had to do that. Normally it only happens in War Room. So yes, I'm definitely going to do the final two maps in a separate video. It's only been 19 turns. That's... that's crazy. Ah, Steam popped up right at the last second, too. Alright, let's blow up the rest of these suckers because I want this to count as a raw win. Oh. Oh, the cruiser's still there. Oh, I completely forgot. <laughs> the enemy cruiser. Well, that gives us the chance to simply spam more units. It's been over there this entire time. But yeah, we will capture this HQ and then that's it for the first map against Sturm. Nope, that's not it. Still calling him Junior, I say. I see.
Yep, Sonya's in danger, just like I thought. All right. A rank, please. Oh? Yeah, it's an A rank. All right, so that means next time on this playthrough of Advanced Wars, we take on the final two maps of the game. And uh, they're going to be crazy, that's for sure. I don't even know if I can do it. Well, I probably can, but next time, the final battle. See you later.